Welcome back to the fourth simulation chapter. In this last video, we are going to discuss some important issues about force simulation and then we conclude this chapter. There are several issues we need to think about when we run force simulation in practice. The first problem is very long CPU time. We can solve this problem by distributed computing or force simply. The number two problem is large memory requirement. We can run out of memory due to too many number of faults. A third problem is potentially detected faults and uh, the last one is compatibility with logic simulation. We will go into details in the following slide. To solve the runtime and the memory problem, we can divide the big four list into smaller partition and we run each partition one at a time. This is what we call multiple paths for simulation. A simulation path is a single simulation run from the beginning to the end of the test pattern. In multiple paths for simulation, because the full list is smaller, so the memory requirement is smaller. Number two solution is distributed for simulation. Again, we can partition this full list into smaller list and we distribute this full list to different machines to run in parallel. This is what we call distributed for simulation. The third solution is emulation. We can use hardware emulator like FPGA to speed up the force simulation. Potentially detected force is also an issue for force simulation. Potentially detected force are those faults that may or may not be detected in practice. Force simulation cannot determine whether this fault are actually detected or not. Possible reasons for potentially detected faults are bus contention, such as this example. Suppose we have a stuck at zero fault and the two bus drivers are driving this bus at the same time. We don't know the exact value on the bus, so this is a potentially detected fault. On the right hand side, we have a feedback loop in the circuit. Consider this stuck at one fault. With this stuck at one fault, we can have an oscillation in this loop. So we don't know whether this fault is detected or not. Please note that different tools have different ways to calculate fault coverage when there are potentially detected fault. So please see the tool menu for details about full coverage calculation. The final issue is compatibility with logic simulation. In practice, to speed up full simulation, many tools require our circuit to be represented in a library model predefined by the tool. However, in practice, when we are running functional verification, logic simulation often involve mixed level codes such as delay, RTO behavior description, or user defined primitives such as D free flop or MUX. Those primitives make for simulation very difficult. In conclusion, we have shown different force simulation techniques in this chapter. Now we want to compare the pros and the cons of these techniques. The first requirement is unknown logic values. For serial force simulation, it is essentially the same as logic simulation, so it has no problem with unknowns. Parallel simulation can handle unknown without problem. Concurrent and differential simulation have no problem either. 
However, deductive force simulation has problem with multi-valued logic, so it cannot handle a norm very quickly. So now, please pause the video and fill in the following blanks by yourself. Okay, back to our video. Have you done yet? About delay form model, we know that serial force simulation can handle delay without problem. Concurrent and differential simulation are essentially event-driven simulators, so they can also handle delay form model without problem. However, PPSFP and deductive force simulation has no timing information, so they cannot handle delay model in the circuit. About runtime, serial force simulation is very slow, so it's not useful in practice. For sequential circuits, PPSFP consider only combinational circuits, so it cannot be used for sequential circuit. However, in practice, modern circuit has DFT such as scan built-in. We can apply PP SFP to sequential circuit with full scan. And finally, about memory requirement, we know that deductive force simulation and the concurrent force simulation cannot predict the memory required, so they have memory problem. In conclusion, in this chapter, we talk about for simulation, they can be used for ATPG for grading and diagnosis. We introduce six different techniques for for simulation. In practice, the most popular for simulation techniques in use today is PPSFP for combinational circuits or a sequential circuit with four scan. Concurrent force simulation and differential force simulation are both good for combinational and sequential circuit. In the market, there are many force simulators available. For example, very four, fast scan, Tetramax, and the Turbo Scan or Turbo Four. You can use try to use these commercial tools to understand the content of this lecture. Thank you for watching.